Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. This footage was taken before we did a three month sea trial of the system, so make sure you watch till the end for a comprehensive review. Those of you who saw in a previous episode, our lead acid batteries are toast. We've taken them out, we're just running the boat temporarily on one battery through our charger, but we desperately needed to upgrade our battery system. So I was ecstatic when Battleborn Batteries reached out to us and offered to repower our boat with brand new lithium batteries. So obviously, the first question that everyone asks when you talk about lithium is, is it affordable? I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This is about eight to $10,000 worth of batteries right here. The difference between what I have in front of me right now and what I had down there is 95% of the capacity of these batteries can be used. As opposed to my old lead acid, only about 50% I was able to use without damaging the batteries, which is technically around 400 amp hours of usable power to 1000 amp hours of lithium. So this is an insane upgrade. So these battle worn batteries can do up to 5000 cycles. The old lead acid batteries can do up to 500 cycles. So that's almost 10 times the lifespan and what you're seeing in front of me here. With Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a Hurricane Damage Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So going back to the price of these things, if we didn't get a sponsorship deal, would I have still gone lithium? The answer is yes. Why would I have gone lithium? Because in the long run, these actually turn out to be cheaper than lead acid. So bear with me here while I explain to you how that's possible. So right here in front of me, I've got a thousand amp hours of usable power. I used to have 400. The 400 usable amp hours cost me about $2,000. So the $2,000 of lead acid, you'd have to have two and a half times that to equal this. So we're already at $5,000 to match the capacity of these. So when you call it a worst case scenario of 3,000 cycles for these batteries to last, and best case scenario of 500 cycles for the lead acid to last, we're talking six times the lifespan on these batteries compared to lead, lead acid. So if you times that $5,000 by six, you're at an extortionate price. And that is how this becomes affordable. Uh, don't touch anything in here, you'll get pregnant. <laughs> the good thing about these is that the BMS, the battery monitoring system, is inside the battery. It's all enclosed. You guys can do your own homework on these batteries because there's some reviews online which kind of speak for themselves and they also offer a 10 year warranty. So, you can't beat that. I think now we're ready to start dropping them. Once we drop them in, we're not gonna wanna take them out. Power off. Just a bit heavier than the lithiums. Oh yeah, all this way. And then a couple. This way. I love new shit. It's like Christmas. This is the distribution box. And I believe I can just bolt them together to make one big distribution system. I'm gonna rip this old inverter out. Got struck by lightning, guys, if you've only just joined us. So this inverter's gotta go straight into the vent. Also, if you've just joined us, this is a hurricane damaged boat, and the other side of the boat sank, and this side here stayed dry, so all of this was okay after the, other, after the hurricane, but the other side I had to replace all of the wiring, I had to rebuild the engine. It was a big job. We got through it. All right, this is going in the bin. So we got 10 lithium batteries. We just went down and we used this as a sample of how long 
every one of our cables has to be. So we want the positives and negatives to every battery to be equal lengths. Boom. Okay, so in a marine application, they always recommend using tinned copper. Silver tinned copper. So we got tinned copper cable, tinned copper lugs. We got heat shrink to, to seal those. These lugs also don't have a hole in the end of them, so they're completely sealed. So this is about the best stuff you can get. Okay, while the guys get the cables ready, I'm gonna prepare all of this. Each battery on the positive side will get a 400 amp fuse, and that's gonna protect each individual battery. Like we've stressed, each cable length is exactly the same, so they're gonna have equal draw coming to this bus bar. Okay, now that we got all the wires cut, we're gonna crimp these bad boys. Is it closing? Yeah. One down, set the nine to go. <laughs> This is a Victron Multi Plus. There it is. Three kilowatt inverter. We got two of them. The reason for two is that we're going to link them up in the future when we go to in, an induction cooker and whatnot. So at the moment, we're just going to run off one. But it's amazing to have two, even just for redundancy, crossing the Pacific and stuff like that. Woo! How fat that bad boy is. AC in, so this is going to come from shore power. AC out, that's going to go out to the boat. We've got battery, battery. So it's an inverter charger. So when we're giving it 110 volts, it's going to be charging the batteries. I think it's a 120 amp charger. So, solid amount of charge coming out of one of these. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. no, so the only other thing we have to think about is the shunt. So a shunt is something that measures current. A thousand amps. So this tells us exactly what's going on with our entire system. This goes directly onto the battery. And if there's any charge going into the battery, we'll see that through this. If there's any draw from the batteries, we'll see that. So that we also know the state of charge of our batteries at any time. So quite an important piece of kit, this. Okay, we are ready to start hooking these batteries up. We're going to start with the negatives. Boom, look at that shot. But look how good this is looking. All the negatives connected up. Positives tomorrow. So, that's enough for today. Progress. Solar project. We're gonna run wires, put these connectors on the end and hook up the solar at this end. We got four panels, we're gonna pair them up. Two in series, two in series. This is the positive of one of them. So this will be our first join here. So when someone is walking, ooh, some of the one are dancing. Okay. Hey, focus. <laughs> Do you guys prefer to, to know about the wiring <laughs> or to see some girl dancing? And that's going to end up in there. Once that clicks in there, it's not going to come out. Yeah. Okay, so that's our first one. That's going to sit kind of like that. Beautiful. Okay, we've got all the 
charge controllers mounted. We mounted the Servo GX, which all the um, inputs go into, which are going to tell our touchscreen what exactly is going on with the system. We got the two MultiPlus inverter chargers mounted. So we're in Tom's cabin. <laughs> and uh, we're ready to continue with this installation. So we have all of our positive battery cables here. One odd. We're going to run them all through the fuses. I've got all the bolts that we need now. So there's power right here. There wants to be power there. This is the negative. So if I jump that to that, it will send a little bit of power to the toaster and charge the capacitors before we just go bang and turn that switch on. Okay. You might have to hold it down. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the inverter on. I don't know why I'm nervous. It's pretty straightforward. The positive's coming here, coming from here. That's tight. It's going to this bus bar. Turning it on. Cool. It's got a green light. So it's plugged into my computer. So I should be able to see it come up. Multi plus. We're going to tidy it all up. We've got covers that go on here. And I'm going to cable tie everything. Don't worry guys. We're not going to leave it like this. But I'm pretty freaking stoked. We've got a thousand amp hours of lithium ion batteries now. Our uh, quality of life has just improved significantly. Oh, didn't see you there. Hey, um, what are we talking about? Okay, guys, you may have noticed that a lot of that footage you just saw was old when we were still in the shipyard, some of the older crew. That's because I didn't want to release this episode without being able to do some sort of review in the same video. So we've been out here, we've been running on the lithium, we've been running through the inverter, and I'm here to report what it's like. Watch this. This tells us everything that's going on right now. So it's about 11 o'clock in the morning and we can see here that we have 78% battery. Right now from our solar, we've got 2.2 kilowatts of power coming in to the batteries, which is the same as about 143 amps. So the batteries are getting a really good charge right now. The AC loads are 63 watts. That's just a, maybe a computer or two. So the fans and lights and whatnot right now, fridges, they're drawing about 240 watts right now. So the first and probably the most important one is making water. So let's go turn the water maker on right now. Okay, here's our Seawater Pro water maker. It runs off AC power through the inverter. So let's run it. I'm not gonna go into details about how this thing works in this episode, but we turn on the boost pump that supplies salt water to the system. We turn on our AC pump, which is producing high pressure to the membranes, and then we crank this bad boy up. Okay, we're at roughly 800 PSI, and we're producing almost 45 gallons per hour right now. You remember we were already putting about, pulling about 75 watts out of it, so we're, the water maker is pulling about 1,000 watts, so one kilowatt right now. The solar is still bringing in 2.2 kilowatts so we're producing over twice as much power as the water maker is using we're making water right now and still charging the lithium incredible okay what else can we do through this inverter well jamie's going to take <laughs> jamie's going to take us through some of the stuff that's changed in our lives in the galley welcome to the bulk kitchen so we're gonna get the pressure cooker going we've got a whole chicken and potatoes Protein, baby. Oh, yeah, I know how to use it, don't worry about that. Okay, so we'll plug the rice cooker in first. It uses about a thousand watts. So that's the rice cooker going. Now we'll plug in this um, pressure cooker. This is our new favorite friend at the moment. Instant pot. Instant pot. This is not a paid promotion, but it is good. 
<laughs> so it cooks a whole chicken in about 15 minutes and now you just don't touch it and it should start drawing power any second so this guy here this instabot there we go yep there he goes drawing now Woo, baby so this Instapot can draw up to 1500 watts depending on what it's cooking. Let's go have a look at the touch screen. So we're cooking rice and cooking a whole chook and we're still producing more power from the solar than we are pulling in the galley. So the success of the system is hugely dependent on how much solar we have. And we've just gone and put three kilowatts of solar power on this boat. So because of that amount of charging, this 1,000 amp hours of lithium is normally 100% just around or after midday, and then we're completely topped off. Cattle we use every morning and the blender probably every second, but now it also saves us on gas, so we don't boil the water on the gas, or we don't cook our toast on the gas. It's hard to find gas in remote areas. We're also a YouTube channel, so we've got multiple laptops all charging at the same time, We've got camera batteries charging. We've got drone batteries charging right now. On top of all the AC stuff that we've gone and bought, we've still got the DC systems like the fridges. We've got three fridges and a huge freezer all running off the DC side of the system still. So we're using a huge amount of power on this boat and the lithium is handling it absolutely fine. All right guys, just to show you what we have to do if there's no sun for more than a few days and we ha haven't charged our um, lithium battery bank we've got a little Honda generator here and that supplies power to the inverter charger and that pumps 120 amps into those lithium batteries so we just place it on the deck here and plug it into the shore power plug and run it that way so we'll show you what we did So now we've got 1600 watts of charge coming, coming in from that Honda generator through the inverter charger. It's doing a bulk charge and the boat right now is using power, but we're getting, a, uh, we're getting 62 amps of charge going into the batteries. You do this for three hours, for example, and you've just put 200 amp hours straight into the battery. We're at 83% now of battery charge because we ran the water maker today for four hours. We were completely empty on the port side. I expect to see about 62-65% tomorrow morning before the solar kicks in and then we'll be back up at 100 around midday or just after lunch. So. There you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Battleborn, thank you so much for the sponsorship deal. Um, I'm sure you hear this all the time but you've literally changed the quality of life on board. We don't have to worry about power anymore. I'm super excited to go with induction cooking next and um, couldn't be happier. Thank you guys. See you next week. Oh, and because I know you're going to ask, we have tiny alternators on this boat. So that's why we have the Honda generator. So the next big upgrade we have to do is put big alternators on the boat so that we don't have to run the Honda. We can just run one of the main engines and charge the batteries with the alternators. Good night, guys.